All right, um, hopefully this is better. Um, finally got this back up and running. So we're back at it and let's get to work. All right, let's get to work, peeps. Sorry that I uh, got some weird issues. I don't know what's going on. So one of you guys on there gave me some super good advice. Freaking love it. Um, pretty much a two by two, if you guys want to call that. I uh, crammed it right in here. On the, pretty much on the cylinder number one right here. And where's that crank bolt? Here we go. Pretty much had this on here. Uh, my wife just had a hold down right here on this side. So that it prevents the um, motor from or the stand from flipping over. But she held that down, pushed down on that sucker, and broke it loose. Didn't have to even use the uh, super impact gun. So that was pretty cool. Uh, good, good advice from you guys. Uh, like I said, this is what we're about, man. Advice, help from each other. It worked. Um, so the next thing we're doing is that we're going to take the, uh, the rod bolt off so we can drop the pistons. Um, and then once we drop the pistons, we're going to do the main bearings or the main caps and we're going to pull the crank out. So we got to take out the front main seal here. So I'm going to get on here so I can see your guys at the chat, the chat room here, answer any questions while I'm working. But if you guys have questions today and are just joining me um, uh, for a fun little night session, uh, we've been working pretty much since 9 o'clock in the morning, um, working on this uh, 1.18 motor, because we're going to tear it all down and we're going to take it to the machine shop and get some work going. Uh, right now, I mean, I've got to figure out my funds and what's going to be going on later with the, uh, the process here, but... Uh, right now, I'm doing pretty good. So, if you're just joining us, let's let's take apart this um, this Mark IV, right? This MK4 1.8T uh, motor here. So I don't know. There's three people watching. Say hi. See what's going on. Layton, what's up? Anything? Uh, new or different for this motor you know what no we're not going to change it we're going to do the exact same thing because i want to make sure that everybody uh did what i did and spent the same amount of money that i spent that way it's an affordable build it makes sense we're not oversizing the cylinders we're not oversizing the crank bearing the main bearings the rod bearings nothing's changing we're doing stock pistons still but ie rods though um, I'm not going to change anything for that because it's very vital that a lot of you guys, yeah, you're probably not going to do a big turbo, <laughs> but no headlights. No, I'm going to have headlights. We're just going to double check all the wiring. <laughs> um, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do the exact same build, but we're going to do it fast because I, I'm giving myself a goal and a time limit. So. I need this done quick, efficient, and I'm not doing a DIY. We're just going to film it and do it while we're going at it, you know, live. So I think it's going to be a fun, what we call a fun, uh, fun session. We're going to be, like I said, we're going to have a lot of fun doing this together. I'll be answering your questions while I'm working. I'm going to be using my office chair while I work, you know. So we're going to need a 10 millimeter for the front main seal and a ratchety ratchet you know what I, I like the Jetta front end conversions I just don't like it for my car <laughs> what's up Eddie what up yeah we're working man we're working tonight we're gonna work for a while we're gonna have some fun I'm going to get some tunes going in a little bit. 
Um, since I can't play actual like music on YouTube because I'll get copyrighted and blah 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 blah, um, we're gonna do some video game music if you guys are okay with that. I'm a big video game music guy. I love old school uh, music for video games. So we're gonna jam out to that in a little bit. If you guys don't mind that, well, we'll do it in a little bit, okay? But if you guys have any questions while I'm working, please, please talk and let's let's uh let's have some fun tonight, man. You know I'm gonna be up for a while, so why not, right? Why not? So what I'm doing right here is the uh, front main seal using the 10 millimeter uh, socket here with an extension. So there's one, two, three, four bolts for that. Make sure you have your trusty flathead screwdriver. And then there's a pry spot right here or right here. Okay. I'm over here, so I'm going to i going to pry this, huh? Not prying. What's going on? Hmm. You know what? We got six bolts. We're going to use the stock head, Eddie, but we're going to use upgraded valves. Um, you want to upgrade at least, if you're on a budget, at least the exhaust valves uh, whenever you go to a bigger turbo uh, and what I mean by a bigger turbo not a KL4 not a KL4 you know 23 I'm talking about you know uh, either a T3 T4 or a GT28 a GT30 um, one of the uh, big issues with uh, with Mark IV heads are the um, the heads don't flow really well on high temperatures so you're, you end up burning a valve if you don't upgrade at least the exhaust valve. Intake side, who cares? You know, honestly. Um, so I am praying, praying so much right now because I got my car back. If you guys saw that earlier, um, I'm praying that the, I'm going to take apart the old, the burnt motor and I'm going to hope the head is good so I can at least salvage the valves. I just want the valves. I'm not even going to keep the retainers or the springs. I'm going to use those valves for the um, uh, for the new uh, my current head on this car. Um, so the front main seal, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, ten millimeter bolts. There's the um, this is the front main seal, and then this is actually the uh, the crank seal. Uh, make sure we're going to pop these out later uh, when we get back to rebuilding that. Okay. Put that in your pile of stuff. Now, right here for the cam, not the cam, I mean the oil, uh, oil pan, um, ah, the oil pump chain. Just take that sucker off. Just pops right off. This keep. Do not throw this away. This is super important. This isn't timed. It doesn't have a marker. It doesn't need to go in any specific position, but. You need to keep it and keep it clean. So, if you have your handy dandy sandwich bags, put that in there. Okay? So, while you're at it, um, you'll see this. This is the uh, tensioner for the actual um, chain, uh, for the chain for that. You're going to need to save it, and the only reason why I'm telling you you need to save it is so you can buy another one because you're going to need to replace this. Uh, these wear out pretty quickly. Uh, not quickly, I'm not going to say quickly. I mean, they wear out, and you're not supposed to reuse it, okay? Uh, be careful because they, they are under tension. I mean, it is under tension, so it'll, like, freak out a little bit. It'll spring out. But once it gets out of the way, it, it will should be fine. And you'll see here, let me give you guys a close-up. Um, you see this. This is why I need to replace it. You'll see it's already digging in to the plastic. It's, those grooves are super deep. 
that this is ready for a replacement. This is no go anymore. No bueno. Get rid of it. But keep it so when you get your new one, you know exactly what it looks like. So put it in the bag, in your baggie of stuff. Okay? And out of the way. Now, on my pile here, I got a pile of rear main seals and front main seal uh, bolts. You can put all those together. Not a big deal. They're exactly the same. So when you put it all back together, you should have an exact amount for both sides. So front and rear main seals. Sandwich bag, right on it. Don't be dumb. Don't lose your stuff. I guarantee you most of you guys can't memorize half of this stuff. Okay? Because hey, you're going to turn it down and you're going to get busy with life and you're going to forget and you're going to be like, oh, where did I put that? Guess what? If you had it in a sandwich bag, you put it right there in the sandwich bag. That easy. Now, if you guys done this as much as I have, don't need a sandwich bag. You'll remember all that shit, but you know what? I don't care. I still follow that procedure, even though I've done it so many times. Um, so the next thing is the uh, rods. Uh, we're going to do all the rods right now. We're going to take those suckers off. Um, I would recommend just putting back the cam uh, bolt uh, and the gear back on. Not to like on tight, just put it on so you can rotate the actual uh, crank with your uh, socket here. This will help us um, you know, rotate the crank. You guys see that? So we can get each set of rod uh, rods up. Okay? Pretty simple. Now we got to get the sockets for these guys. So I'll be right back. Oh, let's see. We got some questions. Okay, Layton's asking, do you need, you do need the AEB uh, intake manifold for the AEB head. However, you can't use that in a GTI or in a Jetta. So what you have to do is get a spacer for it. So a big port to little port until you can afford a big port manifold for a GTI or a Jetta. Okay, Layton? Okay, so Heller, new to your channel, any tips on doing a Euro tuning SAI delicate? And where where are where are you? Uh, have you gonna be kind of a just tinkerer? Well Heller uh, Heller Tech, I am how can I explain this? I went to automotive school for two and a half years. I learned everything there is book-wise about cars. Okay? That don't mean shit. When people say, oh, I went to school and I'm a mechanic, I go, no. No, there's book smart and then there's tool smart or car smart. I am a VW Mark IV specialist, I guess I can say. I've been doing this for such a long time that I can do anything and work on any Mark IV with a 1.8T or 2.0 and a 12 valve VR6. I'm very new to the 24 valve VR6 so I don't know very much about them but 12, 12 valve, 2.0 and 1.8T I can I can tinker with one of those no, no problems. Um, if you got the SAI delete kit I actually have a full DIY on how to do it. It's super easy doesn't take very long to do. You can do the entire uh, delete within like under four or five hours. So it's a lot of fun actually. I like actually removing and doing all that stuff. So I mean, if you're in Escondido, California, zip code 92025, uh, if you can hit, find me on some spare time, which I won't have very much of because I'm gonna be doing this and my new Mark IV that's coming soon, I can help you out after the fact, but I don't know when that's gonna happen in all honesty. 
So I would recommend just using my videos and then asking questions while I'm working live. Uh, for Layton, uh, just did my CAT scan. Not, uh, not the whole thing yet because I don't want to sell. Cool thing about CAT scans, they will not give you a check engine light. They don't have anything to do with the... Um, uh, with that part of the system however you will get a check engine light if you did a delete on the um, if you did an SAI delete because you're going to get a check engine light for a secondary airflow however that check engine light does not affect the car's performance it won't mess around with any of the fuel trims or any of the um, uh, warm-ups that you're going to have in the morning uh, Eddie I did the deletes and catch count on my 1.8 and it smokes like crazy took that out <laughs> well, Eddie, if you did a catch can, did you do a vent to atmosphere or did you do recirculate? Because there's two different things. If you recirculated it, you will not get a smoke at all. But if you did vent to atmosphere, yes, it will smoke. Uh, that's, the, that's the normal. That's, that's normal because you're venting it to the atmosphere. But if you recirculate it back into the intake manifold, I mean back into the, uh, the hockey puck, if you want to call it on your uh, turbo inlet pipe, you should not get any shot. So yeah, you something's up. You were smoke. You probably have something wrong with your piston rings because you're smoking a lot. That's usually what happens if you're doing a lot of smoke. Something something's going on with the car itself. When I had my um, uh, when my white car was working and running, uh, I had a vent to atmosphere and it had very very little smoke and it wasn't very bad. And that's a brand new motor, man. And that should have a lot of blow by, but it actually did not have that very much. So, sums up with the car. You might be burning oil somewhere um, because uh, it's it might be a problem somewhere. Um, yeah, you, you'd be surprised even if it has perfect compression. Um, I've seen cars with perfect compression and still you still can have blow by. Compression only means uh, the piston rings. But does not uh, does not affect the uh, the stem seals because uh, you can have them be perfect while the car is off. But once you hit a certain temperature while you're driving, it can actually expand and give you more blow by. So you'd be surprised on what things can uh, leak oil um, or cause just enough uh, oil leaks. So it's it's kind of hit or miss, unfortunately. And if you had it set up for recirculation and it was still smoky, then you might have um, uh, oil maybe going through the turbo and burning through the turbo and re coming back out of the system when you were using that uh, setup because I've never seen um, recirculating uh, oil cash can smoke it's very uncommon if it is doing it there's, there's a problem somewhere you know uh, I know you did a compression compression uh, test but yeah I mean if you took it out and there's no more smoke more likely the uh, the catch can did you use one of those cheap eBay catch cans without a Without a baffle in it? That's another question. Because a lot of people use those cheap $20, $20 $40 cash cans, and if they don't have a baffle in it, um, you're literally just dumping oil back in, and it'll burn, it'll smoke too. I'm waiting for your answer, Eddie. Or did you actually get a brand name catch can or a high quality catch can? Interesting. Yeah, that's really odd, man. I wish I could give you a legitimate answer, but that's really odd. Um, well, Heller, this is this is my advice for deleting your small system. Um, if you're going to delete it and you don't have smog in your area and you don't care, um, number one, your car will run better. Okay? It's amazing what happens when you start getting rid of shit especially on Volkswagens. They run better for some reason. <laughs> um, so, number one. Number two, you really need to get a custom tune. Do not get an off-the-shelf tune. Do not get a Unitronic. Do not get APR. Do not get GIAC. Do not get a Revo tune. They will not delete your emission system because they like to be street legal. They like to be 100% legal for any state. 
So don't do off the shelf. I am not a fan of off the shelf tunes. Since you're deleting stuff, you might as well go custom and actually benefit and reap the, award, the rewards for a custom tune because they will be more aggressive, you'll have more fun driving the car, um, you'll make more power, and then they can delete, um, like say you don't want any of, the, of those um, check engine lights for the emissions, maybe you want to go to a catless system um, so you can uh, not have a check engine light for having no cat, uh, maybe you want to go, you know, bigger injector or bigger... Uh, intake, I don't know, depending on what you're doing. I recommend uh, Turbo Concepts, uh, Motoza Performance, uh, Gonzo Tuning, Eurodyne. Um, those guys are freaking phenomenal tuners. These guys will take care of you. Uh, C2 Motorsports, just use Google, don't ask me for the links. You can find them online, they're super easy. What's going on, man? Um, for Layton, uh, if I get the uni tuning, will I still be able to get a tuner? And don't go to Unitronic, man. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. You're going to spend too much money. Go to a custom tune. You actually will spend less money. And they can also remove the immobilizer. So say down the road you want to go to a different car and you don't want to spend the money for another tune, you can pull the ECU up, pop it into their car, and it will work. You don't need to spend any more money. Um, or you know get another tune so it's smart yeah, honestly it, it is a smarter way to go um, Maestro is the same thing as Eurodyne just so you know uh, just another company they use the um, Eurodyne uses Maestro software so if that's your question yes uh, Maestro is really really good phenomenal it's it's probably the most open source tuning um, what's really cool it's upgradable you can literally go to your from your stock turbo to ko4 ko423 to a big turbo to a monster turbo or if you want e85 they will dial it in and get it done right for you especially if you have specific mods like instead of just a cold air intake you got a cold air intake maybe you did water meth uh, uh, they got that. Um, what else is there? Um, maybe you got, you know, a, a, a bigger, um, what is the wastegate for your KO4? There are custom, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. All your tunes, you're gonna, you're gonna buy online and ship your ECU, and then they're gonna tune them for you. And then you have to log them if you want, like, something crazy custom and fun. Yes, Heller, um, but a lot of these tuners have what you call a, a, a typical flash because, again, everybody, Mark IVs have been around so long that there's so many tuners out there. Um, a lot of them pretty much are slightly different just because they're, they, they tweak things differently. So just shop. You're going to find what you want. I can't I can guarantee you, you'll find what you want and you'll find it for the price you want. Now, if you want my recommendation because I like the tune that they gave me, go to Turbo Concepts, turboconcepts.net. Um, or uh, hit up Trenton Smith. He's a part of them. They're the same company. But go to their website, uh, email them, tell them what you want, and they'll take care of you. And just tell them that Al, Pinche Al sent you and recommended it, and they'll take care of you pretty quickly. Now, I'm not going to say they're going to give you a discount or anything like that, but they will take care of you. They're awesome. They took care of me. And it, they got me an ECU within four or five days, which is amazing, you know, turn time for a, a big turbo custom tune. Just remember that. So I got to go grab some sockets. I'll be right back.
you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask, okay? Now these bolts that I'm taking out, these are stretch bolts. These are one-time use bolts. So you're not allowed to reuse these, okay? Same with the uh, rod bearings. They're one-time use bearings. So if you're going to pop these out and, you know, use them on your motor, remember you can't reuse these anymore. They're one-time use. So make sure you do that. Uh, Nema says X. I know, man. I'm, I... Uh, I mean, I have to relive this every, like, 10 minutes because people keep asking. I know. I'm sorry, too. Um, me, too. I can't wait to see what my new car turns out. Um, but this is what's going to happen. So my new car will be identical to what I had. I do not want to change it. I do not want to make it any different because I love the way it was. So I'm not going to I'm not going to change it up. I mean, I was super happy with it then. Why change it? I got no reason to change it. So I'm going to stay this the way I had it. So here are the two rod uh, main caps here. Remember, when you take them off, you got to put them back in the same way. So give yourself an area where you're going to lay your stuff down. So I don't have an area right now, so I'm going to make one. I have a stupid mess in my garage from the glass bill. So this is the front of the engine, this is the back of the engine. So this is considered cylinder number one. This is cylinder number four. Remember that. So we're taking one main bearing out and we're going to put it in order. Same way you take it out, same way you put it back in. Cylinder one, cylinder number four. So this is where it gets messy because these damn pistons still have oil in them. So I got a messy floor now, but it's okay because race car. If you guys are just starting to get on, we're pretty much rebuilding my other spare motor that we were using, that we were gonna, we were gonna use for my Mark II. <sighs> so we're not gonna use that anymore, obviously, because I don't have a Mark IV anymore. But well, that's going to change soon. Believe me, it's going to change very soon. So, trying to get this piston out. Got to be careful not to um, hit the uh, crank here. So I'm just trying to figure out what I can do. Don't want to damage anything. So, put my leg underneath it, put this here, there we go, so piston number one, what's going on baby? I think 
Okay. So I got piston number one out and it's messy. So we gotta figure that out right now. It actually don't look bad at all. No play. I mean, it's all good stuff. So we'll put this over here. And now we gotta go to cylinder number four. Let's see, I've been on a project of mine almost a year now from start to finish. What do you think about ECs? Okay, well, if you're wanting to get the ECS tuning stage one clutch, it's a good clutch. I like it. I had it on my car for a while. Um, uh, they, work, they work really well. That clutch is really good for for stock to like um, stage one, stage two tunes. Even for a K04, it actually holds up pretty dang well. Um, uh, Heller, is there any specific uh, part on a one point that is really a pain to work on? <laughs> yeah, you're funny. Um, something that is difficult to work on on a 1.8T. Hmm, that fails pretty often. We got a couple things. If you're doing the smog delete, then you just got rid of all that. Okay, so that's, those fail pretty often. Those smog systems are pretty notoriously going, they go back pretty often. Um, heater core is a common failure. Uh, control arms, common failure, especially if you drop the car more than an inch. Um, axles, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, driver side axles will pretty much fail every three to four months if you lower the car more than an inch. Uh, let's see, nothing in the rear. There's usually never a problem in the rear. Um... That's really it. As long as you maintain the, um, uh, keep your, uh, you use G12 coolant and you replace your timing belt and all your timing components every 80,000, 70 to 80,000 miles, your car will last a very, very, very long time. And what I mean by a very, very, very long time, this motor has 500 plus thousand miles on it. Okay? Not 5,000. 500,000. So, yeah. <laughs> Eddie, yeah. <laughs> I've gone through like, when I was static, I probably went through, uh, probably a, one axle every three months. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I can replace an axle in under 30 minutes. That's how good I am with it. Um, Let's see. Yeah, the, the bolts on the side of the transmission uh, that go on the side, yeah, they're in a really awkward position, but they're not that hard. Um, if you do go low on your Mark IV and you don't want to replace the oil pan to a hybrid oil pan, spend the money for engine spacers, okay? Uh, on a uh, Euro tuning, they sell the 1.8T engine spacers and VR6 engine spacers. They raise the engine one inch from stock. Number one, it prevents the axles from binding because you're obviously changing the angle. Number two, it lifts your oil pan an inch off the ground. <sighs> Solved. Done. $115 fix. And you'll never have that problem again. Just FYI. God damn. God damn, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're having making that much power, you're going to go through axles daily. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Piston. Almost fell. 
that piston out of here. Uh, so Eddie, for you, get some engine spacers, bro. You'll, you, you won't regret it. They will stop those axles from failing that quick. Just FYI. Every person that I told to get engine spacers on their car, pretty much almost, almost nearly stopped having axle problems. So, hey, it might be something you would want to do later. All right, so cylinder pit rod number one and four are out. Next are number two and number three. Uh, when you buy the uh, engine spacer, they actually give you the spacer for the dog bone too, so you don't have to worry about that. It's a full kit, so it accommodates everything you need to do for your, uh, for your spacer. So that's what you do, sir. All right, so cylinder number two, up. I get that radio playing in just a minute, man. It's getting boring in here. You guys aren't asking enough questions. You're not keeping me entertained. I only got nine people watching and only four people commenting. What's going on, peeps? Come on, let's talk. Let's get to know each other. I'm here to be your friend. Pinche Al is not a pinche douchebag. He's a pinche friend. <laughs> Oh, 
So let's, let's talk, guys. Let's see what else we got. What else? What other info you guys have? Let's see. Heller. Can't wait to get my Jetta together. Waiting on crank position sensor. Do I say delete? Replace PCV holes. All my full stainless. Oh, nice. Stainless steel. Good job, girl. Stainless steel. Unless you're a guy. I don't know if you're a guy or a girl, but. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, my exhaust is all stainless as well. Um, just a way to go, honestly. Lasts longer. It prevents rust. Uh, what you just saw me throw away was one of the main bearings. They're not usable. So, don't worry about them. Just toss them. What I'm doing here is that I'm banging the, uh, the old main bearing or rod bearing and hitting the piston down and let my leg catch it. Yeah, Eddie, I'm not a fan of straight pipe. Sorry. Um, it sounds cool, but I don't know if you've ever driven in a car with a big turbo straight pipe. It is freaking annoying. Uh, especially if you commute to work like I do, um, it, it drives you nuts after like a week. Uh, I'm not down for that. You know, I respect it, but in all honesty, there's no performance gains at all. So, for all you guys who think a straight pipe exhaust makes the car faster, guess what? It doesn't. It just makes more noise. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I remember a couple of years back um, when I first built my uh, my Mark IV with a F23 turbo kit. Um, I drove probably like about 20 minutes from my house to the exhaust shop with just a bolt-on downpipe. Um, yeah, downpipe, three inch, all the way out. Holy hell was that loud. Holy hell. I, I mean, it drove me nuts. I couldn't wait to have an exhaust put in. You know? So all four cylinders are out. I mean, pistons are out. Now we need to get the crank out. Crank is now um, ready to come out. Yeah, I know, I know the pops and crackle are cool. You know what you do? Put a bigger turbo and a bigger exhaust, so three inch all the way out. Put a good, good uh, muffler. Don't cheap out on your muffler. Uh, a big MagnaFlow uh, straight through uh, or uh, um, what we call an offset. You'll get your pops and your crackle, but it'll actually sound freaking legit. Like It'll sound gorgeous. I don't know. If you ever listen to one, but it's way better. See, Luis, you left on canal. I'm always working, man. Never going to give up. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up on my car. Yeah, there was a tragedy, but guess what? We we learn from our mistakes. We learn from our accidents. I'm I'm going to work, man. I'm going to work. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm still hurt. I'm still really hurt, you know. I'm, huh. You know, it's here in my driveway now, and it's, 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 it's gone. Man. It's a goner. But you know what? We're already starting again. I mean, <laughs> look, <laughs> we're back at it, and we're gonna work. So hell yeah, let's let's work. So now you got the uh, crank bolts here. Uh, the crank bolts, I believe, are 18. They're like a funky size, I believe. 
chicken. Do the funky chicken. Do the funky chicken. That's an 18. Let's try a 17. Yeah, so it's a 17 mil. And you need a breaker bar for these. And when I mean a breaker bar, you need a breaker bar. Because these go on tight. And these are called main caps, okay? Uh, these is what actually hold the crank in place. Very, very vital. <laughs> well, Heller, there's a lot to learn on my YouTube channel. This is not the only uh, video I have I'm doing. I mean, I have this build right now. We filmed the entire process step by step by step so you can learn how to build a one big turbo 1.8T. Uh, prior to that, Heller, um, we also have a ton of DIYs on coilers, um, suspension work, uh, what else is it? We did smog delete. We did uh, uh, a couple years back. I showed you guys how to do an F23 turbo kit, full well, removal, full installation. Uh, I have everything you can dream of on how to do engine work in your Mark IV. So have fun with that first, because the new Mark IV we're getting is going to be unmolested. It's going to have a complete stock interior. So we're going to do everything in that together. We're going to tear that whole entire interior out. We're going to show you how to remove seats. We're going to show you how to remove a headliner. We're going to show you how to build a custom false floor on the trunk. We're going to build some sub boxes. Uh, we're going we're to do a lot of stuff on my Mark IV that we're getting uh, very soon. So, you know, get your sleep. You know, don't, don't stress, girl or guy. I don't know if you're a guy or a girl, but don't stress out, you know. You know, it's, I'm here, I ain't going anywhere. Um, tonight is just, like I said, disassembling this whole entire motor. And we've been doing this live all day today. You know, we did this and... The false floor DIY is like, hands down, probably the easiest DIY I'm going to give you guys. You can do it literally in like probably an hour. It's so easy. Um, you need about like 30, 30 bucks, I think, if that. Um, it's probably one of the easiest things you can do on a Mark IV to make it look really nice. Um, the reason why it's really easy to do, you have everything there already. You just got to raise it up. Um, a lot of people, the reason why you add a false floor in a Mark IV and the trunk, or a raised floor is what we call it too, um, is to put airbags in. Oh, we're gonna show you how to put it, install airbags too. Um, Cause I'm gonna bag my car again. Um, thankfully, the um, fire department did not hose down the back of my car. So I'm hoping that the uh, air, my air system is still intact. Um, I will need though, uh, if any of you guys have a V2 controller, uh, mine pretty much is destroyed. So out there, if you guys have one of those, please hit me up. I'm more than willing to pay for one. Um, just you know, hit me up on here. Hit me up on Facebook. Um, I did put a little little button on my video here. If you want to help support the page and uh, the build. Uh, if you put your cursor over the video on the uh, upper right hand corner, there's a little card button right there. Uh, it takes you straight to my online store. Place an order. Uh, I, will, I make, you see my press right there, uh, my lanyards up top. I make t-shirts, lanyards, and stickers here at home. Um, so what people don't understand, like what I do, 
uh, on the side is um, right, right, Luis. I know, I agree. Um, I'm a giver, guys. I only give. I never like to receive. And what I mean by that is, a lot of the money that I make uh, uh, selling my products, I donate as much as I can because. There are truly a lot of people in this world that are in need. And you'd be surprised on how close they are, these people that need help. So a lot of times what I try to do is with the money that I get, I donate to the military or I donate um, to homeless shelters. You know, I, I keep enough money from what I make uh, to pay for my uh, materials and I keep a couple bucks to myself. But I don't, I don't, I don't, um, uh, I don't try not, I try not to splurge because I'm not like that. You know, I, I don't like having expensive things. I don't like showing off that I have expensive things. You know, I do work a lot. You'd be surprised. I work two jobs. Uh, one thing I would, uh, wondering about what are some nice bucket seats that they're able to use stock belts but nothing breaking the bank 17 year old guy if you put your uh, cursor on the video there's a little explanation point if you click on that um, that right now on this video there should be a little button on the right hand corner it will let you go to my online store right now and buy stuff if you want to buy anything um, uh, Heller, uh, a really good company, and those are the seats I rock in my car, because number one, I have a really bad back. I don't know if you guys know, um, I have a condition on my back, actually, and it, it truly does suck. Um, I have something called spinal uh, degenerative disease, and what that means is that my spinal cord... Um, uh, disc are pretty much falling apart. Uh, I have four um, herniated disc or bulging disc, uh, what they call. I have four of them, okay guys? So me sitting in this position right now is not the best, but I do it. I don't care. Uh, it hurts more if I stand uh, and sit uh, in the same position, but yeah. Um, so what I do is that this company called Cypher Auto. They make uh, racing seats and bucket seats. Uh, usually the ones I have run about 900 bucks for the set and that's left and right. They're not very expensive. Uh, the guy who actually owns the company, his name is John. He makes them in Los Angeles, California. He hand makes these seats and they are TUV certified. What that means, the seats are designated and certified for safety in a car and they're not cheap eBay seats where like they don't have any certifications they're just a fucking seat made out of either plywood or paper God knows what they're made out of um, these seats are safe they're meant for track use but they're great for daily now if you don't want to get into custom brackets and all that because um, by the time you're done with the brackets and the seats you're about fifteen hundred dollars in with that much money in a set of seats, if you wait and shop on Facebook or VW Vortex pages, you could probably get a set of OEM GLI or 20th uh, Recaros for a Mark IV for like $400, $600 on average, depending on condition. Um, and they're straight bolt-ons. I mean, you can use all the factory stuff and you don't have to modify any of the seat belt or anything like that and you can rock those. I highly recommend going that route instead. They're always online. Another one, a, a harder seat to find, and I think it's actually harder than the Recaros, are the big bolster uh, leather seats. I think those are actually a much harder seat to find on a, on a Mark IV than just Recaros, because Mark, I, I actually see more Recaros than I do big bolster leathers. Um, so that's just something I would recommend. The Recaros, though, look freaking titties in a, in a Mark IV. They just look good. Um, you just gotta be able to hunt them down. They're not, they're not always online for sale, but you can find them. Don't be afraid to shop. Uh, VW Vortex, 
or go to Facebook pages. Just look up MK4 something. Uh, Burn all the MK4s is a freaking cool Facebook page. But be forewarned, don't ask anything about your car because the first thing you're going to get is trolled on and you're going to hate life because people think you're stupid. Don't do that. Just go on there to shop and look for stuff that you're looking for. If you do not know, search it first. Don't ask for people on Facebook because you will get trolled and you will get shit for it. Just don't do it. Don't don't give yourself. Just don't give yourself the headache. Honestly, there's just so many assholes out there that they're just literally waiting on Facebook to be an asshole. So if you want that in your life, go for it. I just I already warned I already uh, warned you. <laughs> I already warned you. Um, ifrost7ed, what's my Facebook? Well, you can either find me personally or you can find uh, my build uh, that we lost uh, just on Saturday. But um, the my personal Facebook, uh, if you want to write down my name, uh, it's A-L-V-I-Z, last name Varela, V is in Victor, a-R-E-L-A. That's my personal Facebook. But if you're going to keep watch and um, watch my YouTube channel and keep uh, constant updates, just look up Pinche Al's Garage. It's all there. Um, I have the links on my main page on YouTube. If you look on the little right-hand corner, there's these three little dots. You'll see two Facebook ones and one to another my store. Um, that's where you go to look up stuff and find me. I, I accept everybody's friends requests. I don't care because my Facebook page literally only has car stuff. So, have fun with that. <laughs> so one thing you're going to have a, um, fun with taking off the main bearing is these have to be wiggled on and off, left and right. Um, again, these only go in one way. They only go off one way, and they have to go back on one way. Uh, they are numbered. Uh, let's see here. This is number one, number two, three, four, and number five. Number one being the front main bearing. Number five being the last main bearing. And they're all numbered. Uh, the numbers do have to be in one specific way. So the one facing the front, uh, I guess, the oil dipstick. So this one, make sure that it's going this way. Keep that in mind the entire time, okay guys? Because this is vital for your reassembly of the motor, okay? So as a word of advice, take them off and move these over to your pistons and remember where you took them off. So number one, Oh wow, thanks. Thanks, Luis. I <laughs> I appreciate that you ordered something from me. Uh, once I have some time, I will make your product this week and ship it out this week. I make everything from home and they're made to order. So whatever you buy from me, I make it to order. Okay? Thank you, buddy. You don't understand how much that matters to me and how much how much that makes me happy that people are supporting what I do. I mean, I have a lot of fun. I hope you guys have fun with me. Um, because that's what we do. That's what building cars is about, is having fun and experiencing it with each other. You know? I'm all about the, the experience, the fun that we spend, the time we spend together. You know, yeah. We are family, man. VW people treat each other like family. They don't treat each other like JDM people. Yes, I said it. <laughs> JDM people don't like each other. They're, they're like weird. I don't understand. Like, I don't know why they dislike each other so much. And 
It's weird, man. I don't, I don't even get it. I mean, I wish I could say, oh yeah, they're, they're, it's just, I don't know. The older JDM guys, they have the Volkswagen uh, mentality. Oh, thanks, buddy. I will always keep that in mind. I, whenever I go up north, um, I always hit up friends, hang out, um, go to meets. Uh, I do go a lot to Fresno uh, to meet up with some of my friends. Um, you know, so you know, if I pass by or go down, I'll meet up with you guys. Uh, pretty soon, though, I will be going to Magic Mountain and Universal Studios. So if, someone wants, if you guys want to hang out and have some fun and go on some roller coasters, we can meet up there and go. I'm a big roller coaster. My wife and I love roller coasters. Just FYI. There's nothing more fun than freaking going on a roller coaster. Or being in a big turbo 1.8T is also super fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I went to a meet recently, I went to a mixed meet, I showed up, you know, and it was a bunch of brand new cars, I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool, 100% stock, brand new cars, it's like, yay, you did nothing, you put on some STRs or some ESR wheels, Good for you. Good for you ruining your car with some cheap ass wheels. You know, I guarantee you the stock wheels probably were better, but who cares? Well, oh, no, this is actually from my first Mark IV GTI, if you wouldn't believe that. Uh, Ugo, uh, this, this, this motor, believe it or not, has 500 plus thousand miles so it's pretty gnarly but it's actually in very 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 good shape so we're gonna work with this uh, motor for the current for the next build so yeah I know why are they doing that they size each other up like like oh my dick's bigger than yours guess what I don't care hey babe what's going on No. Do you need help? Huh? No, I got taking the motor apart. <laughs> yeah, stock is weak sauce. You know, form over function. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all about old cars. Or older-ish cars, you know. Mark IV is an old-ish car. They're already getting up there. Almost gonna hit 20 years old, believe it or not. We're on seven, what, 15, 15 years old? No, 17 years old. Mark IV came out in 1999. So, yeah. One more main bearing. This was. A toughie. We did have a good time in Luis. Talking about the birds and the bees. And these nuts. <laughs> Ah, this center bearing is like the worst because it's got thrust washers in it, so it really locks it in place. It's so annoying. Thank you, Heller. Oh man, that's awesome. Thank you for the order. Um, if you guys keep ordering more, it's gonna take me longer to make these orders, but. Remember, I make everything in-house. I do it for you guys. I do it for myself. I do it for the community. Um, if you guys are willing to wait, we got some more good stuff coming soon. So uh, I'll make the order now. Uh, when I have some new stuff coming, I will 
maybe put it up there and put a sale, um, sell it for a little bit less. So I don't, um, cause I don't want to screw anybody over, but thank you, Heller. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love the support guys. Um, I will get to it as fast as I can when I got some time this week and make, start making products for people. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, no, man, you guys paid for something. It's not fair to keep people waiting. I gotta, I gotta do this. It's, you know, when you pay money for something, you expect to get your something within a timely matter. And that's only fair. So, I believe in that because that's just how it works, bro. That's just how it works. But thank you for the purchase, and I'm gonna still work. I'm working. Gotta work for my money. Uh, 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 uh. I gotta work for my money. And I can't get this shit out. Uh. Holy crap, Ola, this is hard. My body lies over the ocean, my body lies over the sea, my body lies over something, holy crap I can't get this off for me. <sighs> oh, let me get some tunes going because this is bugging me. I'm a big fan of Mega Man 2, so a lot of my videos have Mega Man music. So if you guys hear that, this is Mega Man 2, the entire soundtrack. It's awesome. It's one of my favorite soundtracks. I just need some noise going on in the background. What's going on guys? Ah, my Alfords! I still have them! Untouched, they're in, in, in I have them taken care of. Don't worry about those. They're, they're coming back. I'm making, I'm giving those wheels a comeback because I gotta get another set though. I gotta get another set and I gotta... Oh yeah, I still got them man. I'm not getting here. Those are my favorite. Those are my favorite wheels in the world. You know, I don't care if they're single piece, but oh my god, I love them. Um, but I want to find another set so I can get those copper plated as well. Because, you know, the trailer looks kind of weird, but I love the way I had my trailer set up. You know, because I did the moon caps. There we go. And they look dope. I mean, I was pretty impressed with how they came out. Finally, I got the cylinder number, let me see, or one, two, uh, one, two, number three out with thrust washers. Can you guys see that? Oh, 
All right, so everything's out. So now I can take the crank out. Um, let me get this one out first. No, they are not copper dipped, they are copper plated. Very different. Um, how much did that cost me? <laughs> oh man. Well, if you want to, if you don't know anybody, you know, and you're just going to go get it done, just go to a shop. Number one, have, have fun trying to find a shop that's going to do it. You're going to have to suck some weenie. <laughs> because there are probably one or two wheel shops that you'll find that will be willing to copper plate a wheel. And what I mean by that is copper is an extremely easy metal to tarnish. So whenever you copper plate something, it has to be clear coated immediately. So if you find if you find a shop that's willing to do it, do it. Now here's the catch. What people don't understand. If you ever had a wheel chrome plated, you notice it usually costs like 75 to about 100 bucks a wheel to chrome plate a wheel. Sometimes a little bit more depending on the wheel itself. Now, that being said, if you guys know the chrome plating process, this is how you can get around a lot of this stuff. To chrome plate uh, a wheel, there's a specific process. First, you have to break it down to bare metal, number one. Number two, the wheel itself will be magnetized and dumped into nickel plating. Uh, the reason why, because if not, the copper won't stick to it and then the chrome. So the next, once you have something nickel plated, the next process is copper plating, okay? Because uh, chrome will not stick to, uh, to nickel. Once you have the copper laid on, then we put chrome and then it's polished. However, the copper has to be polished before the chrome goes on. The quality of the polishing of copper will determine the polish of your chrome. Okay? Now, if you understand that process, you can wheel and deal a plating shop and be like, look, you're doing less work. So, <laughs> all right, man. People are asking questions. I'm trying to help. Okay? So if you can find a, a, a plating shop and talk to them about this, because you understand how it works, they won't jip you. Most uh, plating shops will call, charge you $600 to $800 per wheel to get copper plated because they, you, they're tricking you on that. So FYI, okay? All right, now crank comes out. Like that. And what fell on the ground was the uh, rear main seal. Right here. Pretty easy to remove. Uh, this is a one time use uh, seal, guys. Don't reuse this. One time seal, one time deal. Throw it away. Huzzah, huzzah. Alright, so now that the um, crank is out, you're welcome. You need to take out the main bearings, which are one, two, three, four, five of them. And you need to inspect your uh, your bearings here. Not your bearings, but your 
your seals here, guys. Got to make sure these are nice. You don't have like a crazy lip or worn properly or warped or blah, 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 blah. Because if you do, that means you have to oversize stuff. So when we drop this off at the machine shop, they will tell us what needs to be done. That's what machine shops are for. Okay? You have to push down on them. Like that. From one side to another. It's the thrill of the grill event, now at the Home Depot, where the Kingsford Lone Star Charcoal Grill is a special buy at just $99. You'll save 50 bucks. It's durable cast iron grates and extra... Yeah, I know, Luis. It's expensive, man. Burgers at a time. It's expensive to, um, Undisputed grill to do custom work like that, but get a fresh like I said, if you know how to wheel and deal, you can get around it. I mean, you could probably the Home Depot. spend about 100 bucks a wheel if you... If you can find a shop that's willing to willing deal with you, you know. But you need a good excuse to get out of town. Like I said, you gotta Here's find one. It took me June six 1st, wheel shops to actually get second, my wheels Tim done. Allen, so June seventeenth. Be patient. Vegas gives you Make sure you have a spare set of wheels to drive around. Now. Well, that's just happening. Vegas twenty four seven and um, keep your ears open for more. So now the block is completely torn Vegas, apart. Uh, we're gonna to take out the water pump right now. Com. Paid for by the Las Vegas Convention. And so the next thing we're going to do is actually uh, unbolt the head, uh, take apart the head and the cams. Um, because I didn't do that before. I didn't have the actual uh, bid ready. So we're going to do that next. With flavor combinations like black cherry dragon fruit, mango pineapple, lemon lime, uh, orange grapefruit. Here. Okay. So well, now we're going to flip the engine voice. back around. <clears throat> With zero calories, zero sweeteners, and four flavor combinations, Aquafina sparkling is simply more interesting. That was awesome. Get a taste of simply more interesting flavors with Aquafina Sparkling. Available at Target today. Now that we uh, finished the, the bottom of the engine, now we're going to do the top. We're going to finish the water pump, which is a 10 millimeter. Uh, the water pump is not reusable, guys. I don't care if it had like a thousand miles on it or 10,000 miles on it. Don't ever reuse a water pump. Just buy a new one. Don't jip yourself. Don't give yourself a risk of reusing anything timing component wise. They're cheap enough, affordable enough so that you can replace them and not screw yourself in the end. You'd be surprised at how many people I know, I'm not going to say any names, who have reused these parts and then bitch that shit's leaking or shit's not timed correctly or things are just not working correctly because they did something wrong. We know why? Because it, it stretches. Stuff stretches and, you know, and wears out. So, yeah, things are gonna not sit correctly anymore and not be correct. So, why give yourself the risk, man? You know? Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's, it's a, it sucks, but, you know? One of those things you just, this is a metal impeller, you see all the rust in here. Uh, this engine's been sitting for a while, so it's gonna get a little bit of rust. Throw that shit away. inside the cylinder walls and see if nothing is like funky. Feel for any like 
offset, rounding. Because that's what's gonna happen when they take it to the machine shop and they're gonna be like, oh this is this is what's wrong with this and that, and they might have to bore it or they might have to machine it over a little bit. Little things like that. So it's uh, useful. Yes, sir. There's no time to waste, man. If I wait, it's going to take longer. <laughs> right? It's going to take me longer to rebuild. So, I might as well start. Um, this stupid freaking thermostat is giving me such a headache. I did not want to come out earlier. Ah! She's out! She's gone. See if that has a lot of pitting in here. No way, no. We're gonna have to get that really cleaned out. Because if you don't, when you install the new one, it's gonna start giving you some problems down the road. Start leaking. So these are little things you need to inspect. Make sure you know, everything's good. It doesn't look that bad, but we'll see when we take it to the machine shop. We'll tell us otherwise. So that's all off. Let's see what else needs to be done. Oh, we gotta put the head back on and take off the cams. Uh, we couldn't do that earlier because I didn't have the correct socket with me, so I got it now. So let's do that. I know, I love Mega Man, guys. I play that all the time when I'm working, when I'm editing. I'm a big Mega Man guy. A lot of guys don't know it, but I'm a huge video game geek. So I'm trash digging right now. So I need some head bolts. Uh, let's see here. What uh, car I'm picking up? I'm picking up another Mark IV, man. I'm going to do another Mark IV and then I'm going to make it exactly the same I had before because I love my car. So I'm not going to stop. Need the head bolt. The little uh, parts there are going to hold it in place for me. So, so to remove the cam caps the official name for that. Um, you guys are going to need a T30. Now remember, front of the engine, back of the engine. The cam cap, same exact process. Cylinder one, two, three, and four. These have to go back the exact same way, go on the same way, go back the same way. So, so this is the uh, 
the AWP head. If you guys don't know what I'm working on right now. So if you guys are just tuning in, live, we did a full disassembly already. Now we're just doing the final uh, pieces here. Once I have this all taken off, we're gonna say peace. So, until I get my stuff in. So if you guys have questions tonight, ask away because I'm here to help. Okay? All the bolts have to go on the same exact way, guys. They go off the same way, go on the same way, go off the same way. These are reusable. Okay? Don't be afraid of that. Anybody on tonight? Ask some questions. Don't be shy. I ain't gonna hurt you. Let me turn the engine over here. You guys can get a nice close up. There we go. So what we're doing right now is removing the cam caps on the intake side of the engine. If you guys are just tuning in. I'm Pinche Al, and we're doing a full live uh, build or disassembly of a 1.8T. Um, so, I mean, if you guys have any questions, don't you know, don't be shy. I ain't gonna bite. I ain't gonna hurt you. You know, we got a couple of viewers on here. You guys are just probably watching in the background while you're doing something. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. You know, we're just here to hang out and you know, just build a race car. Or just a fun car. Whatever you want to call it. Ooh, we're on the last like couple tracks of the uh, the album, this is Dr. Wiley's level. My phone dinging. Let's see what's going on.
people commenting on my uh, YouTube and Instagram. Just hitting me up, what's going on? Well, this is what's going on. I'm live. I'm on the interwebs. We're building a race car again. <laughs> you know? Ain't nothing can keep me down. Ain't nothing gonna stop me doing from this. You know? I live for this stuff, guys. I live to help, I live to build, I live to tinker, I live to do everything. You know? Life is too short to be concerned. Alright, we're gonna change it up right now with the music. Let's see what we're gonna figure out right now. I got another good classic sex selection of music right now coming up. Alright, if you guys know this music, and you know what game this is from, mad props to you. Because I have a lot of respect for people who like this music. Not many people know about this anymore. You guys are youngins. Come on guys, there's, there's like seven or nine of you on here right now. Where's this from? What? Come on, answer this. Come on guys. Some of you guys gotta be geeks like me. I'm in this garage right now. Now for this part, the, uh, the, the hydraulic tensioner here on the side, what we call the, um, the cam chain, tensioner and chain, we are not going to reuse these. These are not uh, something I want to reuse on the rebuild. So FYI, I'm never going to reuse these parts. I'm going to get new ones. You always want to get new those new just because you know you want your stuff to last a good 500,000 miles like me. So I'm going to get those replaced too. So. Got a commercial! This job that allows me to see people sometimes at their most vulnerable. They've been through calamity, something horrible. But time and time again, you see them move forward. And that, to me, is remarkable. If there's nothing else I've learned from this business, it's the ability of people to bounce back. To be at their lowest, their most vulnerable, and somehow put one foot in front of the other and move on. It is, it is something remarkable to behold. You know, one day, 
Okay, so my guess I want to meet the guy from Mighty Car Mods. I want to hang out with him. It's actually one of my dreams because I've been, uh, I don't know if you guys ever watch or follow Mighty Car Mods. These guys are freaking cool, man. Hilarious and super cool guys. One day I'll meet them. Maybe one day I can get famous and maybe we can collab, you know, with them. It'd be a lot of fun. I don't know. I doubt I'll ever get famous, but it'd be fun. It'd be something I, I'd like to do in the future. All right. So now all the cams are are pretty much unbolted. Remember, front of the engine. Put your cam the same way. One. Two. If you pay attention, the numbers are facing down. There's actually an arrow on the cam cap right here. It tells you where it goes, facing the back of the engine. Nobody has guessed what music I'm playing. Man, I'm sad. One of the best selling games of all time. Zelda? That's actually not the best selling game of all time. This full Zelda. way. <laughs> no, it's not Zelda. Pretty close though. Pretty close. So the tensioner comes right out. So make sure you take that out and you keep it with your other stuff. Pretty cool. And you'll see how this one works. It's got tension on the top and the bottom. It just keeps that cam chain really nice and tight. Well, the game that's playing this music right now is Final Fantasy VII. 
Okay? If you are a gamer and you play games like I do, you'd know that. But see, Final Fantasy 7, specifically 7, has made probably the most money in its lifetime than any other game. Because how freaking awesome it is. Okay? Cam chain, just put it aside. I know I told you I'm not reusing it, but I gotta have it there as a reminder. Okay? Now, intake, exhaust. You know exactly how they go in. They only go in one way, so who cares where you put them? Pretty straightforward. There are one valve or um, valve uh, cap, I guess you want to call it, or valve guide. Uh, there's a couple of names for it. Yeah. Um, these, uh, I forgot the actual name, I keep forgetting the actual name for these. But if you see where my hands are, there's uh, three, six, nine, twelve valves here. That's for the intake. Two, four, six, eight for the exhaust. And the one that goes bad on these cars, on these, especially on these heads, the 20 valve heads for any 1.8T, is the center valve. Um, so what you need to do, you got a magnet. Or bits to take out. Um, take one out and see if it's not caved in because they're notorious for uh, that valve caving in on the bottom of it or giving a taper. Uh, if you don't get that valve, that uh, that one replaced, you can float a valve on a uh, really high horsepower uh, builds. Okay, uh, I'm done with the head for tonight. Um, there's not much for me to disassemble uh, anymore except for the valves. We're not going to do that. I don't have the tools to take it apart. So I'm going to leave this as it is. If you guys are getting ready to drop this off the machine shop, each one of these has to be marked and has to be numbered. So remember, front of the engine, back of the motor, cylinder number one, cylinder two, three, and four. Valve, exhaust valve number one, number two, number three, number four, or cylinder number one, valve number one and two, cylinder number two, valve number one and two. That's how you're going to remember how to put these back in order. Um, if you don't, these wear specific to the cylinder. If you flip them, you can have oil leaks, you can have smoking, you can have weird problems. So. Listen to what I'm telling you. Do that because it's the right thing to do. Don't mess up because you're gonna have problems. Okay? Just throw away the half moon seal. Um, looks like I'm done with that. I'm done with the pistons. I'm done with the cams. Hey, Barney. My dog coming in. Hey, boy. What's up, Papa? completely disassembled to a point. Right, go, go. Let it go. Come on. 
Come on, Bubba. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's go back. Come on, turn around. Turn around. No, turn around. Come on. Dog wants to chill in here, but... He just had surgery, so try not to because he slips on the floor. But we're done with this. I got a couple more minutes for any Q&A guys. Feel free to ask. Do not draw or clean the cylinder walls. Um, you want to make sure this stays uh, oiled because you don't want to uh, start creating rust. So make sure that's not cleaned or I mean not dried out. Um, try to think what else is there. I think that's it for tonight, guys. Like we fully took apart a 1.8T in one day. Uh, taking my time and having fun talking with you guys. Um, so what's going on? Hit me up. What do you guys want to talk about? Got a couple more minutes before I have to go. But yeah, we finished it. Um, I'll show you guys some problems that this motor had. Kind of hard, but I want to show you guys. So we're going to inspect the actual block here. Let's uh, turn the music down. show you guys here the engine so I want you guys to see this so expect inspecting your uh, your top of the head okay or the uh, the cinder block a um, couple of things you need to really pay attention to if you guys see this let me see see here where my fingers at there you go it can be bouncy and jittery, but pay attention, okay guys? Uh, here, see how like, it's not really dark? It's still, you can still see some metal and gasket. And over here, same thing. Not very dark, still see metal. But, here you go. This is where the problem was on this motor. And you'll see this here. See this right here? It's black, it's burned. Okay, it's got a little bit of warpage, and what that means is that this was burning oil. Oil was going from one cylinder to another, just going through this little passage uh, or fuel. So that was causing, uh, for me when I was driving, a lot of smoke. No bueno, guys. This is not good. And that's on between cylinder number two and three. And then we move over down to uh, cylinder number three and four. Same problem. You see that here? A lot of burning. Burn, burn, burn. Right here, between both cylinders, three and four. So more burning. Not good. Not very good. But, uh, there's an oil passage and then there's coolant passages here. All around the block. They're all sealed. Not a single one has any burning going through it. Or anything like that is just uh, exhaust or fuel going across the cylinders. That's a good thing actually, because you want a, a head gasket to fail that way, 
versus it failing with coolant and oil going into it because now you'll get even more warping, um, more problems down the road. I got a question here by Sean. Uh, the intercooler I have on my, that I was using on my car was a custom one that I had made. It wasn't something that you could uh, just buy off the shelf. It's a fully custom intercooler uh, with the big turbo setup. The one prior to that with my F23 turbo kit, it was uh, a new speed intercooler uh, I was using. So now if you look down the cylinder walls, looks really clean actually. We don't see any weird uh, warping. We only see where it's supposed to be uh, worn where the cylinder stopped. I mean the piston stopped, which is good. It's actually very, very good. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly, fairly confident that this is going to be a very clean um, uh, rebuild. Uh, hopefully it's going to be back to factory spec and we're not going to go oversize anything, uh, which I'm hoping a lot for. So with that uh, being said, uh, I'm done for the night guys. Uh, if you guys, I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to ask any more questions, but if not, I'm going to go to bed. So ask questions, ask questions, because I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Ray, god damn it. Aren't you working, bro? <laughs> yes, I will make love to you. And this time, not from behind. I will look to you face to face, bro. I'll take care of you. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> But guess what, Ray? We finished it. We fully disassembled it, man. We're, we're done. So I'm happy with that. The whole entire engine's taken apart. You know, me talking to people and working all at the same time, we, we finished it. Man, it didn't take much. You know, and that's going... I got my Mark IV back, you know, had to pick up my rental. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only going to have my rental for maybe 10 days, so I need a car quick. Um, Why are you getting the clock out? You just got to work. Oh, no, 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 you're off at 11. I remember now. Never mind. Ah, I forgot. You don't work overnight. You work until night. <laughs> That's dope. But yeah, we just finished up. I'm super happy that this turned out the way it turned out. And I'm depressed at the same time. You know, I lost my baby. You know, but... America, it's time for some straight talk. You have two you know, choices. Everything happens for a reason, guys. And I hope overages or you stop using this reason's your phone. a good one. But there's a third choice. It does really with suck. Straight talk, get an unlimited plan with 10 gigs of high speed. You know what? I'm not going to let it prevent me That's from not doing what I do. A lot of dope. I'm it's not going to let it stop talk, guys, uh, what I do for people and how I do it for people. Networks. Nothing's going to stop me, guys. Only at Walmart. You know, nothing's ever going to stop me doing what I love the most. And that's working on cars, helping people. No. So, thanks for watching everybody, Pinchel's Garage. We will be back uh, once I have a new car. Uh, we'll do a full walkthrough around the new car. Um, our, my old car, we're going to tear the interior out. We're going to tear it out, but pull the interior out um, and store it uh, while we work on the new Mark IV. We're going to show you how to chop up a Mark IV. <laughs> oh, before I forget, if anybody wants a burned Mark IV shell to make a trailer out of it like I did, my shell is up for free.
Once I take everything out of it, you guys can have it for free. If you guys are serious, I will let you have it. Just add friends. But it needs to be taken from my house by the end of the month. So you guys have a couple weeks left. If anybody is serious about my car and wants my white Mark IV that burned up, you guys can have it for free. I will not, you have to bring your own wheels to tow it out, but it will be there and it will be given to you. No questions asked. Uh, I'm going to put the registration up and I'm going to put the registration under uh, a non-op. That way there's no fees or anything for you guys, whoever wants the car. If you turn it into a trailer, chop it up, they have to disable the previous uh, registration and VIN number and the DMV will provide you with a new VIN number and a new registration for the trailer. It's only going to cost you 40 bucks every four years. Super easy if you guys want a trailer. Um, now that being said, I can go one step further for you guys. I will chop the car in half if you guys want already just the back half because if not at the end of the month I am chopping this car up in multiple pieces and getting rid of it I do not want this car in my life anymore I don't have much of a choice to what to do with it after I'm done tearing it out so if you guys are watching this and you want my old car it's for free Okay, for free. Free 99. I'm not even paying anything, anybody, anybody to have this. It's free. I don't know if you guys understand what free means, but it's there's no money involved. <laughs> Alright guys. Thanks for watching again. Pintail's Garage. Peace. Thanks for all the support. Uh, if you're ending the video and leaving uh, on my upper right hand corner of this video playing right now. There's a little button that takes you to my online store if you want to help uh, for the build. I've already had a couple people purchase some swag. It's okay, you don't have to buy the bundle, buy a lanyard, buy a set of stickers or a combo or a t-shirt. Do whatever you want. Help me out. Help this build uh, get done sooner rather than later. I do as much as I can for the community and I want to keep doing this. So help me out guys. Thank you. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.